crikey. All right, hello, internet. It's your favorite bitch, me. We are talking about... If we die today, it's a, it's a production breakdown, baby. Let's get cooking. Quick overview. If you don't know what to expect, I'm going through everything, basically, front to back, track by track, all this stuff. We start with the vocals. Let's see what the vocals are doing, huh? When I'm good and dead. Those are both. There we go. Those are vocals, all right. I think I might haunt you at least for a while. As you can hear, I, I opted for a simple uh, kind of, I call this the radio effect. I don't know if that's what everybody calls it or if that's like a standard thing. Basically just referring to EQ that looks like this, sort of. I call that the, the radio effect. It's very mid-heavy. You can have my body, possess me if you like. Fun to mention, I recorded this entire song twice because midway through I realized that the whole song suited my voice better, a half step lower. What's on the other side doesn't really trouble me all that much. What's on the other side? Doesn't really trouble me all that much. The original vocals weren't bad. They just could have been better, you know. So I made them better by redoing, redoing the whole fucking thing, which was an undertaking. But I did it. But if we die, at got some hominies. Let's see if these are real hominies. Those are real hominies. I frequently make harmonies by just cheating it, by like duplicating the lead vocals, and then using auto-tune to just tune them to the harmony I want. But sometimes I'll just record them the old-fashioned way, I know. What am I, a dinosaur? <laughs> Don't say goodbye, no grief, no need to cry. It's nothing to it, it's easy, it's first grade shit. It's on the other side. Yeah, so uh, once we get to the second verse, say goodbye to the, the radio vocals. Now we're here, we've uh, uh, the presence. All that much. Yeah, I nixed the radio vocal effect starting at the second verse. I didn't want to do that effect for the whole song. Ooh, I remember why I did that. The recording I got, the vocal take that I used, well, they were all polluted by the sound of my laptop fan. It was whirring super bad. I made that EQ decision for two reasons. I like the way it sounded, but it's also to cover up a recording mishap. You just gotta make your cover-ups look intentional. Yeah, if we die, I think we'll be all right. This is the chorus, if you're unfamiliar. Yeah. What, I wonder what, if, what effects am I putting in these background vocals? Putting some uh, weird stereo effects on there. It just kind of sounds like a chorus, though. <laughs> chorus effect on the chorus. I guess that's why they call it the chorus, huh? Yeah? Ah. Just close your eyes and dive, dive, dive. I give these, these dive, dive, dives some love. I don't know if love's the right word, because I just distorted the dick out of them and then reverbed them out. As you can see, the wet is maxed out and the dry's down here, so it makes it makes it sound like I'm yelling from over here, which is which is cool. Right? I think it's cool. But what the fuck do I know? Dive, dive, dive. Yeah, that's pre-reverb. And it's post reverb, so yeah. Rise and dive, dive, dive. Yeah, I, th that's the second chorus. And on the second chorus, I pull the same stunt with the dive, dive, dives, but I, I activate some bananas f feedback delay. I trigger that. Dive. And it just. Ooh, it goes for a while. It goes basically for like 30 seconds or something. Yeah. It is uh, symbolic for me. That was a symbolic mixing, you know, producing choice because you're you're diving into 
death, oblivion, a black hole, and that's that's a long, it's a long, it's a long haul. You know, who knows how how, how far that one goes? So, you gotta introduce Echo. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. That's the vocals. Let's talk about the drums. The drums are pretty saucy. believe I'm using, what kind of kit am I using here? I'm using a 707, the 808's younger cousin. But yeah, I'm just using a, a busted up 707 drum kit, mostly. That comprises most of the drums in the song, is, is this. For those who don't know, the 707 is like a, it's a famous old school drum machine. And this is just the samples from it. Let's, uh, let's look at what I'm putting on these drums. Whole drum bus is being sent to this delay, which is, it's just a very short slapback delay. Again, I don't know if that's like a, like a normal thing to do. That's like a well-practiced mixing thing, but I started doing it, just messing around, really liking, liking the way it sounds. It just gives the drums more character. God, they need as much character as they can get. Uh, I'm bit crushing the, the whole drum bus a little bit. It just adds a little hiss on top of it. Yeah. It just, you know, computerizes it a little bit more. Makes it a little punchier. Just trial and error led me to that decision. And then radiator. I put radiator on almost all of my drum buses. It's kind of like a dis an amp distortion plugin. Just adds a little bit of dirt. And then more distortion. This is truly a silly effects chain. And then there's the limiter. Why is there an EQ after that? I made an EQ that looks like this, not really doing anything. It's half a, half a decibel. Can't tell you why I did that, but there it is. Don't read into it. I just realized there's, it's not just the 707. That, that little snare roll here is another drum kit preset, more realistic sounding drums. So every now and then the real, the real drums come in to just kind of punch it up. Just close your eyes and die, die, die. Max out the reverb for that, that last snare there, just to just explode us through this instrumental moment. I love those 707 toms. They sound ridiculous in the best way. Lots of, you know, just little flourishes in here that I programmed into the drums. The uh, snare, this is, uh, it's pretty subtle. The cutoff on the snare gets dragged down right here leading into the chorus. It's like a, a, a tiny little cue. It's just like a step. It's like a very quick, subtle wind down into the chorus, which is comparatively chiller than the verse. It seems like it wouldn't make a big difference, but I remember making the decision to do that made all the difference in the world. It's like the, the, the transition was too stark before. Yeah, glad I did that. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty rock and roll drum fill here. Fucking getting ready to throw down. Nothing like super intelligent about this, but I always like to highlight little things like this. It's that, that double snare maneuver, just trying to pretend like a real person played this. So you just draw two notes really close together and then, you know, these are the velocities down here. So it just kind of gives that effect. And then, uh, yeah, it just goes in the fucking balls to the wall solo section. I very rarely do rock drums like like rock style drums like full on i don't do it very often because it <laughs> i almost exclusively produce my drums and it's very hard to produce that sound that kind of drumming from from scratch convincingly at least in my experience but with this song since i'm going with this with this old school 707 drum sound it's okay if it sounds like a machine's doing it because that's the that's the whole intention I'm just blasting that ride the whole time. It's 
sounds like that ride has some stereo on it. Yeah, I am stereo enhancing the rides here, which essentially just means applying the Haas effect to them. These crashes have gotta be the acoustic, yeah, <laughs> okay. Panned all the way to the right. I'm a man of contrast. I like I like the contrast between these and uh, these boys. This is a very interesting section, percussion-wise. I'm using samples from such wildly different places. The kick is the 707 kick. These little shakers were ripped from a Casio keyboard. And um, these toms and hats are acoustic samples that are part of a preset that comes with this drum rack plugin, FPC. But they, they're all being run to the drum bus, and if you recall, the whole drum bus is being processed quite a bit. You know, it's being bit crushed a little bit, and it has some distortion, you know, being applied to it, and it's being compressed a ton. So I feel like that, that allows me to, you know, intertwine all these different samples. Yeah, it just came together beautifully. It really gets me amped <laughs> for what's to come. Yeah, if we die. I kind of took inspiration from Boys of Summer by Don Henley. The, the drums that start that song, they're really just hats. It's just this, I just, it's iconic. Yeah, that's a fun stuff. It's just a big build. And this build is relying a lot on the drums to actually carry it up. It's like little stuff happening that you don't necessarily hear, you know, you don't pick it out with your ears, but I'd like to think that it is working in the background to, uh, you know, build up the suspense. It's all, all that stuff together that contributes to a big rise. This is one of my favorite things about this song, like overall. The chorus originally was like the main section. It's weird to say it's not the main section in this song, but it's not. I feel like the instrumental sections are, they're more the, the focus, because the chorus essentially is this big build into the instrumental. That's what it became. I revised the chorus to be a big rise. And the second time around, we get this big riser chorus, and it actually just leads you into yet another giant rise. Uh, it's even longer than the chorus. Half the song is just big rises. It's a very EDM thing to do. Did you hear that? I slipped in some claps. Just going full on 80s here. That clap sample doesn't appear anywhere else in the song, but it comes in here and it's so loud too. I feel like uh, the effect that it produces is just very jarring, but deliberately jarring. It's like, here we fucking go. Clap, clap, let's blast. I uh, just love how these how these drums work in this context. I don't know what it would have sounded like if I if I recorded a real drum kit here. I never I never tried it. I just I felt like from the beginning that these drums were the right choice. Drums are so eager. This is the these are eager sounding drums. Mm. Reminds me of my youth. Those are the drums. Let's talk about the bass or the bass. If you're fishing, recorded my bass direct in. I do so much um, of my recording direct in. Bass is no exception. The most notable thing about the bass in this song is probably the fact that it doesn't come in until a minute in. I feel like because of that kind of suspense, the, when it does come in, it's just like, ooh, yeah. What's on the other side? I consider myself kind of amateur on the bass, but I do what I can. It's a pretty, pretty dirty sound, but that's what we want. Oh, you know how I do shit. I, I'm running the bass through guitar rig. The preset is 
apparently base rig. So there you go. How much is it doing? Yeah, no, it sounds really good. Yeah, I'm, it's just a preset, so I can't really dissect it for you. I just, Guitar Rig has so many presets that I tend to just explore those when I'm trying to do something. Ooh, my light died. Give me a, ooh, that's a hot light. Holy, the light's back on. Yeah, Guitar Rig has so many presets. I tend to just stick with those, unless I'm trying to do something very, very specific. But I always fuck with them afterwards, because after the Guitar Rig, this EQ goes on the bass. <laughs> I'm just saying it like that because when I EQ stuff, I just look at this. This is the second EQ in the effects chain. So I'm an idiot when it comes to EQ. I'm um, taking out the super subby stuff here and slight boost in the bass region. I don't know. Like I'm just stumbling in the dark. I'm relatively novice when it comes to EQing bass guitar because I've only very recently started working with it. Moving on. <laughs> Ooh, that's neat. I feigned the bass back in at the end of this chorus, and it comes in with super hot distortion on it. Very crispy. That's not fucking around. That means business. Using free, fast distortion, it has basically two sounds. This or this. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Super punk rock kind of bass. I'm a big fan of, of slides down the neck. So I got one slipped in right here. Check it out. You, you, did you hear that? Here, let me, uh, let me play it again for you. That's good. That's good. Not much left to talk about with the bass. So. That's the gist of it, again. I say that's the gist of it a lot, I'm beginning to realize, but that is the gist of it. I have the most fun with all my instruments during this little build-up, including the bass, to slip some zesty bass riffs in here. Nothing scientific about it, you know, just improvising a little bit. All right. <sighs> Let's talk about the let's talk about the fucking guitar. With this song, those guitar solos are really the the you know the entree, musically speaking. So this is a guitar-heavy song. I open with this this very quiet riff that kind of just continues under everything throughout the whole song. It is it is a motif. I think I've just got two takes of the same thing panned left and right. And then once we get to the first chorus, guess what? There's a little acoustic guitar that shows up to party with us. But if we die at the same time. Oh, you know what? An acoustic actually just takes the place of this electric. And then the electric just kind of comes in for those that little that melody. All my guitar, by the way, except for that acoustic is direct in. I'm saying that for anybody who hasn't watched any of my other videos, because I say this every time. Um, but I do do almost everything direct in. Call me a loser. I don't care. I think it sounds good. If you don't think it sounds good, that's fine. You know, it's not for you. But this isn't about you. This is about me. That's a remnant from an older an older version of this song where there's just a lot more of that kind of stuff. You can see where it was originally. It's not a big deal, nothing to write home about. Can live without it. In this case, it felt like it was a little bit of clutter, so I took it out. Well, first let's let's talk about this guitar. It's pan to the right. There's a lot going into that sound. <laughs> that is direct in. Uh, it's a direct in guitar. That's more or less what it sounded like at first. And then I throw a guitar rig on it. It's this preset twang reverb stereo. 
So we got that. Why didn't I just stop there? Well, listen. It is just not jiving. It's fighting with that lead guitar. I just wanted to support the lead guitar. So I, I take out a lot of the low end here, and then the second EQ is uh, taking out all these harsh regions. These are like resonant frequencies, I'm sure. Yeah, just trying to, I'm just reducing those spots a bit just to make it slide in with less fuzz, slide into the mix. But we're not done. I just slap a stereo enhancer on there because I do that way too carelessly. I am wanton with my stereo enhancer. And it's panned hard right, so it, act, it just kind of phases it out a little bit. So the reverb really puts it where I need it. Yeah, after that phase that we're getting from the stereo enhancer and then putting it in the back of the mix with the application of reverb, it really, you know, puts it back there. I guess this, the, that, that stereo enhancer kind of makes it sound like it's like it's being played in like a little room and you're getting reflections off of like a, a wall. Like I'm playing that, you know, in like a corner or something. I got a cat. I got to escort this cat out of here. Say hello to the camera. It's okay. Don't be shy. Right. Anyway, I've talked about that enough. Let's dissect this lead guitar. <laughs> guitar rig is mostly responsible for the tone. As stupid as it sounds to say right now, I'm using a preset called 80s solo, which I mean, appropriate. And uh, just some EQ after that. And then delay. That's pretty much everything to it. That's what the that's what the dry recording sounds like. So really goes to show you how how much uh, post you know processing can do. Trying to keep my guitar licks and my drum fills and bass fills all in sync. They're all <clears throat> they all kind of harmonize that's like the difference between like a, a good tight band with you know good chemistry and a bunch of dudes with you know egos trying to show off if you got a, a band with good chemistry everybody's kind of in sync and that's there's something magical about that couldn't be easier for me because i'm just one dude i don't have to compete with anybody i only have to compete with uh, my own ideas This crazy thing you're hearing. I believe that is the solo that that's coming up, but like reverse and uh, you know reverbed out. Just riffing like a fucking mother. Just some very satisfying rhythmic guitar playing on those. Uh, those nits. Got another layer of guitar just just on those to just send them a little bit more. And here we go. It's like the whole song is just building up to this moment. Yeah, and it just plays out. That's the guitar. Let's wrap things up with synths and pads and effects here, which is just this whoosh noise, I think. So let's just throw that on top. You know me and synths. Love synths. Gotta have them. Can't live without them. If I had to guess, I don't know off the top of my head, but I think that's Omnisphere. The slot for Omnisphere. Yeah, it's Omnisphere. It's not like a very sophisticated sound. Omnisphere is overkill, but it's just a patch called Childish Noise Bell. Yeah. Well, there you go. Ooh, is that Zeta? I don't know if I've talked about Zeta yet in, in any of these videos. Zeta, I 
don't think it's supported anymore. This is a very old version. It's such a cool, super powerful synth. Underrated, if you ask me, based off of how many people I know that use it, and that is zero. I discovered it, you know, way back in the day when I was on Newgrounds. Wow, I'm just gonna point this out. My friend Jesse just texted me asking me if the snare at the end of If We Die is a 707. And it is. And here I am literally recording a video explaining that evidence. Great timing, Jesse, I'm making a video. Should have put it on silent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Zeta, very cool. I'm using that for, for that boy. This is one of the more fun things about this song synth-wise. I used 3X OSC to make this. One of FL Studio's native synths. It's just three oscillators. And um, yeah, I just loaded it up with a basic square sound and put some reverb on it, turned the dry all the way down, and then uh, just made this very sparkly pattern with it. Seems like a job for an arpeggiator, but uh, no, I'd rather do it by hand. And then we got this. It's just like a sparkly texture that I, I talk about using presets so much, but sometimes I do make things from scratch. There's a high pass, or no, a low pass on there that's just kind of moving around throughout the section. And then it opens all the way when we get to the solo. So does everything else. There's a lot of low pass automation happening here. I introduce a new synth here for the solo, hence why this the sequence is called solo synths. I'm using two instances of Nexus to do it. Again, Nexus is totally overkill. I'm just using a saw sound but I, the Nexus has beautiful built-in reverb and delay, and I realize using the, the Nexus delay, um, it doesn't match with the delay in the rest of the song, but I don't give a fuck. It sounds good. They're just doing these fifths, or... The high note is panned hard left, and the low note is panned hard right. I just really wanted to, to jump out in this stereo image. There's so much going on, you know, you can't just turn the volume up, you gotta, you gotta be a little smarter than that. Here we are again. I'm just throwing new shit in left and right that I gotta explain to you. This right here, uh, another preset I made with 3X OSC, kind of trying to emulate the sound of an Omnichord, or at least just my friend's Omnichord that he was playing one time, and it sounded like this, and I liked it, so I just tried to recreate that. Uh, an Omnichord is like a harp, it's like a synth harp. That's what they call it. And you drag your finger across this like band and it plays all the notes. It's like a synth that you strum. So these are kind of strums in the spirit of an Omnichord. This other thing here is Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth, i.e. the synth that comes with every copy of Windows. It installs with Windows. Um, it's pretty much obsolete at this point. It's been around for a while. I'm a Windows XP bitch. That was my real induction to computing. But um, that's what this is. I'm using the orchestral harp patch because that's my favorite one. And yeah, just doing some doing some work here. The chorus only repeats twice, and the second time around, a bunch of little things are different. Many of which I've already pointed out. But like on the synths here, this boy. This boy is just layering something that was already there. It's just another layer for the second chorus to just subtly give it some more momentum. The, look at this, these insane stacks of synths. Yeah, that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of instruments. This is a kind of a callback to the intro. This melody is a motif. I bring it back for this buildup, but just with a little twist on it, I just add this very simple walk up. It ascends. Talking about this action here, doing some more work to build up the uh, anticipation.
for this last solo, I have uh, the synths come in and just stack on top of that guitar. This is a song with many layered melodies. It's basically just the vocal melody. The synths are just playing the vocal melody, actually. And when I say synths, I'm mostly just talking about Zeta and uh, Microsoft Wavetable. Panned hard right. That's it. We made it. I, I really get carried away when I start recording these videos. I mean, I want to talk about everything, but like, I think again, I've recorded over an hour and a half and I'm trying to cut this down to like 30 minutes. So we'll see if that happens. Um, thanks for watching. Like always, if there's anything that uh, I, I didn't explain very well, let me know and I will illuminate you as best I can. Just uh, hit me up with any of your hot cues. That's it for me. Stay safe out there. Keep, keep squelching on. Is that a good sign off?